The challenging part of this project was knowing that there was seven different characters involved uh, and we had to make sure that each and every individual one of those had a distinct personality, the right emotions and, and they were appealing. So right from the start we created a character profile for each character and that included a character study uh, and these were sort of animation tests. So it was a, a scenario where a dummy would pop up and we animated each character in that scenario and how they would react in that situation and that drove the other animators style and performance and also the mocap actors in their movements. From the start we, we knew that this piece had to be keyframe. Although it's more time consuming and, and labour intensive, it goes hand in hand with the look of the characters. They're, you know, they're characterised, they're full of character so we made sure that using keyframe animation we could accentuate that style in the characters with their movements. We did use mocap on this project, but it was mainly used as a sort of a block out foundation. So we would take that mocap data, strip it back, use it for the timing and the overall motion of the character, and we'd build on top of that to create the style that we really wanted. I mean, ultimately, these characters in this game are gods. They don't move like normal people. So that's where keyframe animation really comes into its own. So once we've got the storyboard in place, the animators work closely with the directors to develop what we call an animatic. Um, this is just very basic characters in the 3D environment, establishing you know, the, the types of shots that we're, we're aiming for, the camera moves, and, and sort of start to really develop the narrative. Once we've done that, we then move it into a block out phase where we're adding a lot more key poses to the characters and really establishing a style to the movement. From the first smite that we worked on, we knew that we had to really push the characters' facial expression performances. We spent a lot of time developing a new facial rig. It uses a combination of a bone system as well as a morph-based system. We had the ability to, well, we started off with proxy rigs in animation, so that, that made it really easy and the feedback was really quick, so you could get down your solid foundations for animation. But then later on in the, in the more detailed rigs, we were able to switch on displacement maps. They show the fine details of the expressions. So instead of having to wait for renders, which can take a long time, we've got instant feedback of the facial expressions. So once we had established the narrative, we knew that Bologna was our key hero to this piece. We worked with an actress, Jodie. We had a full day shoot working with her. She really, really got into character and her performance, all of that footage, was just such good reference for the animators. It gives you those fine, fine details, you know, the tiny eye flickers when she takes a deep breath in and it just really adds that extra level of detail. So for me as a character animator, Filming your own reference is key. Not only do you get like the visual reference, but you get that emotional reference as well. My favorite shot was when Summer Kong gets hit in the back and crashes the camera. And when I was filming that reference, I just remember over and over, imagining being smashed in the back and just screaming towards camera, just full of rage. I was shaking, veins were popping out. And I think we really managed to grab that feeling and put it into that character.